Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you all how to uh, prepare your photo references uh, for importing into Autodesk Maya so we can get into modeling the character. Now a few things um, I'll show you is uh, once you have your photos taken and you're happy with them you need to make sure that you can get them onto your computer obviously if you take it with a uh, you know take the photo with your phone um, if you have a wire that connects to your computer make sure you pull the the photos off or you could even possibly email them if you're connected to Wi-Fi or use your cellular data or whatever just make sure you're able to get the photos uh, from whatever device you use if you use a camera make sure you know you can get the SD card or whatever plug directly into the computer and you can pull the photos off of whatever device you're using. Um, then make sure when you're ready to open them, uh, we'll go through this step by step. You go to File, Open, Locate the Photo, and then click Open. So Front Body Reference, Open. Mine's already open, so um, here it is. Now, with that being said, um, depending on your format or whatever, but most most of the time when you open a photo, it's going to import on a layer, and I'm just on the essentials here, and then make sure you're on the layers button, and in the bottom right corner you'll see it just opens up as background, and it's going to have a little lock next to it. Now there's not a whole bunch we can do with the locked layer. You can make edits to it and stuff like that, but we always want to keep our original so you always want to keep the original just in case you ever need to go back to it so um, the first thing I want to show you is how to create a new layer so down here in the bottom right hand corner there's a new create new layer button it looks it's like a little square with a, a corner folded over I think of it as like a new piece of paper or something like that you know you create a new page, create a new layer, or just turn the page, turn to a new layer, something like that. Maybe that'll help uh, remember. And from there, it's going to create a new layer called Layer 1. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this layer. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on Layer 1, just double click, and I'm going to rename this Background color. Now from here I'm just gonna go over here to the colors here and I'm just, yours might be black and white uh, I think by default it's black and white and you'll see if I hover over it it says set background color or possibly set foreground color. Just click on the first uh, color box and I'm gonna make mine a sort of a light gray and press OK and you can do that just by clicking and dragging anywhere in this sort of color wheel and you can always adjust the different tones of colors here right but black and white is always going to be on the far left so I'm going to go with you know a, like a light gray and press OK now using my <coughs> uh, paint bucket tool located over here on the toolbox click and hold by default it might be on the gradient gradient tool so if you click and hold on this box, go to the Paint Bucket tool, keyboard shortcut G, and then just go ahead and click. And you'll notice your entirely new layer is now all gray. And you're like, wait, what happened to the photo? Where did it go? It's still there. It's just located underneath that layer. So if I click and drag this, oh, because it's locked, I can't do that. So we need to duplicate this layer, OK? So in order to duplicate it, we're going to use that same create a new layer button but in a different way. So we're going to click and drag on the background layer down here and go to uh, hover right above that create a new layer button and release and you'll notice it creates a layer called background copy and it's going to be an exact copy of the previous uh, photo you had taken. So now we can rearrange these so you just click and drag and I'm going to click and drag on my background copy and bring it above my background color. Okay. So now um, that we've gotten this far, 
the reason I'm showing this to you is you'll notice that my character has an entirely black background behind him. Now you don't have to have your character have this sort of solid color right behind him. You don't have to Photoshop it out. But I'm going to show you just in case you would like to. And also, um, it is actually really, really useful when we get into texturing later. So it kind of gives you a little intro to it. And later on, you might say, oh, yeah, I remember he showed us that. But um, anyway, uh, this is a way to do it. And if there's any sort of personal items in your, your photo that you don't want, this is another way you could sort of hide them or not show them, stuff like that. Now, also, you could always take your photo uh, in front of a solid color wall or, uh, you know, maybe you could hang a drape behind you, some type of old sheet or something. Um, I just recommend not having it be a similar color to the colors that you're wearing. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can erase the background. So the first way, uh, most obvious way, is just to erase it out. So if I click over here, my eraser tool, uh, keyboard shortcut E, click and drag or click and hold and then go to eraser tool located right here you can just start to erase out the background right and you can adjust your eraser brush size up here with the little drop down arrow you can use this slider bar for the size and this for the hardness so if I set it to hundred uh, zero percent hardness you'll notice I have this really soft uh, color to it and I'm gonna press control Z to undo that or edit undo or I could set the hardness to a hundred percent and then it'll have that really sharp edges versus zero percent where it has really soft edges hard edges soft edges so hardness okay so that's one way to do it um, now a better way to do this is to go to layer make sure your background copy is selected go to layer and then down here to layer mask and click on reveal all and you'll notice your background copy layer now has a white box next to it with a little sort of staple or chain link to it it's like a little chain link because they're uh, chained together in a way so the way that layer mask is going to work is it utilizes, it can only use basically two different colors, black or white. So black, using our brush tool right here, or keyboard shortcut B, and you can click hold brush tool. You can right click on the canvas or you can use the settings up here. Right click on the canvas to adjust the brush size and the hardness and all of that kind of fun stuff and you can sort of just paint out the background. Now, the reason why this one's useful, let's just say, oh no, I erased his part of his leg accidentally. Using black, it masks things out. If I switch to white using my brush tool, I can easily just paint that back in, and now I'm like, oh, okay, perfect. Now, with the eraser tool, the issue with that is if you know you Un, you can only undo things so many times before it won't let you undo anymore. So let's just say 15 minutes into it, you're almost done, and then you're like, you realize that you erase something in the foot or something that you didn't want to erase, and you start trying to undo rapidly, and it comes to a halt, and it, you know, you're like, oh no, I'm not going to be able to get that back. That's why one reason it's so important to keep the original. However, uh, this method allows you to just simply paint it back in which is super super useful so that's one way to do it now if I switch back to white I can just I'm just gonna paint this all back in on the layer mask and I'm gonna show you that's one way to get into the fine detail nitty-gritty stuff now the last way is if you do have a sort of solid background behind you or something like that or it's all roughly about the same color this tool is really, really useful. The quick select set tool or quick selection tool. Uh, keyboard shortcut W. So there's the magic wand tool or the quick selection tool. Either or are both really useful. Um, the quick selection tool um, 
they're both based on color. Uh, one is a little bit more like the magic wand tool will just select everything, but you might not get it because I already have this all one solid color. It came out really clean. However, I'm going to press control and D or select D select control D is the keyboard shortcut for that. If I use the quick select tool, which will probably be more useful for this, you'll notice up here we have plus minus, and I think this is just like new selection or add to selection. So I'll start with the new selection here, and um, you can change the size. You know, it, it's it's not really too dependent on the size. It does help when you get into you know smaller details if you need to zoom in. Um, and in order to zoom in, you can hold control and, and press plus or minus to zoom in or out. Control plus or minus. Control plus zooms in. Control minus zooms out. Or you could use the uh, uh, zoom tool here. You can just click and hold and sort of zoom wherever you like. And I'm just clicking, holding, and then dragging uh, up, down, left, right to sort of get to where I want. And another useful uh, tool to zoom all the way out and just to sort of fit your entire image in the uh, screen holding control and pressing zero will zoom you out to fit that to the screen so anyway using the magic wand tool or the quick selection tool excuse me we're gonna use the quick selection tool and I'll just do new selection I can start to select things now I have a really clean background so this is gonna go pretty well but you'll notice around the hair, I'm going to zoom in, holding control and plus, and then I'm going to hold space bar to quickly maneuver around, or you can use the scroll bars at the uh, bottom and side. Um, you'll notice that you know my hair is a really similar color to the background. At least you know Photoshop is finding difficulty separating the two. So now I can switch to the minus tool and just start to sort of click around and it does a pretty good job and if you have a lot of stuff in the background that you'd like to crop out you don't have to do this whole thing but I just want to show you that that's how you could do it and then what you can do is just grab your paint bucket tool and using the black color just go ahead and click and now I've quickly selected a lot of the background out and you know if I needed to go in I could just paint in, you know, areas that I needed, just so you know. So, oh no, it, it accidentally quick selected the wrong spot. I didn't notice it before. Okay, not a big deal. We can just go ahead and paint that back in. So anyway, that's how you can get rid of the background, especially if you have anything in the background that you wouldn't like anyone to see or something like that. You know, maybe you can only take the photo in a certain room in your house or something like that. Um, this is a great way to sort of take care of that um, also once you're all said and done with that I'm gonna just go back to the um, oh, okay so one last thing I guess I'll just finish this off real quick and whoop, control D to deselect and then plus and then paint bucket tool And then let's just say right here, Control D to deselect. I want to, I'm going to just paint this part out because it's just the selection tool wasn't doing too great of a job. I'll just go ahead and do that. All right. So now I've painted out <clears throat> the entire background and I'm ready to take it to the next step. So now I've done it, let's just say for both images, front and side. What I want to do next is I want to um, bring in my side reference image. And one other thing before I continue is before I even do that, I'm going to keep the original and I'm going to keep my edits here also. But I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to select the first one. I'm going to hold control and select the next one. And just so you're aware, if you hold control, I can just select the background. Let's say I wanted just these two layers to work on, right? Um, or you can hold shift and select all the layers that you want to be working on. Um, 
but I'll just do control, hold control, select the two layers I need. And <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate both of these so I have my edits as well as my background, my original. And I'm going to, with these new copies, I'm going to do a uh, layer, merge layers, or control E. And you'll know, notice, or what does it say? Uh, merge down, I believe it says. Merge down. So it merges the layers together. And now it just becomes one flat image. Now with these, um, I'll just show you how to quickly, I'm going to call this um, edit. I'm going to call this, whoops, if I can rename it. Let's see if it'll rename. Original. OK. Oh, and it looks like when I renamed it, it got rid of the little lock button. But I want to keep the original anyway. And now, one last thing I'd like to show you, just to you know, keep your file organized. This is always useful. I'm just going to select my background copy layer and my background color layer. And I'm going to uh, have them both selected simultaneously. And then I'm going to press this, create a new group. It basically creates a folder. And then editable layers. So now I've got uh, my edit, my final edit. I'll call this just final edit. Um, my editable layers in case I need to go back to it. And then I also have my original. I could also create one new final group and with them all selected and call this front reference image right so I've got it all sort of broken down into a nice organized file now the next thing I need to do and this is the most important part of this uh, assignment is I need to bring in uh, my side reference image so I know I already have this all done it's all cleaned up I'm perfectly happy with it right what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press in my my just as we did before uh, you know we we finished our front image reference we finished the side reference image and now we're ready to bring them both together to make sure that they're both properly scaled in proportion to one another and this is really really important so once you have your final editable layer I'll just you know just for sake final edit and I'm gonna call this side just so I know when I'm looking at my layers. I'm going to just do a control A for select all, select all, control A, and then control C for edit, copy. And in here, I'm just going to go ahead and deselect anything I'm on and press control V. Now, one of the things you're going to notice, obviously, it doesn't fit 100%. So I need to make sure that this uh, canvas size is adjusted so I'm gonna hold control minus to zoom out and I can do this two ways I can either resize the which I'm going to need to do regardless um, I can resize the uh, canvas size as well as I could resize just this image but either way I don't want it to cut off my arm um, when I uh, reposition it into the canvas so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to image canvas size and I'm going to press this little left button here on the anchor. And that's image canvas size. I'm going to press this little left anchor uh, button. And what that does is it pushes everything to the right. So anything that I change as far as width or height, it's only going to expand in those directions. Now, if I clicked on this one, it would only expand in the other directions. So um, I'm just going to extend mine right. So, and then I'm going to change pixels to percent, and I'm going to make the width 150, and I'm going to start with just that and press OK. So now, and this is side final edit. So now that I've got my side image here, I'm going to go to this selection tool or the move tool, excuse me, the move tool. Keyboard shortcut V, I believe. Yes. 
So I'm going to click with just this layer on. I'm going to click on the image here and hold. And I'm going to hold shift also just to slide it perfectly over, right? Okay. So now that I have it, I can, you know, it'll snap right to the edge. And now that I have it like this, I want to show you something else. If I go to view and I go to rulers, I just turned them off. I had them on uh, before, but if you probably won't, if this is uh, the first time you you know you've used Photoshop or um, uh, you've just never used the rulers before, if you go to view and then rulers or Control R to toggle the rulers on and off, um, we're going to go ahead and start creating some reference points in order to make these scale properly and make sure that they're done accordingly, so they're both proportionate to one another. So at the moment, you'll notice the top of the head pretty much fits. The eyes start to fall off right away because they're not the same proper scale. Let's go to the bottom of the chin, and I'm basing this off of the front reference image. You'll notice that, and then let's just do one at the roughly about the mouth, right? You'll see that it's not lining up properly from this one to this one, and that's what we really need to do. So on my f side final edit layer, I'm going to start creating some of these, maybe like one at, you know, the pectoral where the, the nipples would be or whatever. You know, a line across there, uh, possibly one at the belly button, give or take, you know, rough idea. One at the top of the belt buckle. Um, one at the, let's just say the ankle. Uh, one at the knee. And that should be a pretty good spot. Um, we can't really do one for the feet yet because if we get went to the bottom of the feet, it wouldn't work properly because this is in a perspective view. As the same sort of thing that I was explaining earlier from the side viewports in that previous video. From the side viewport, we always go off of the back foot in the side view to get the appropriate uh, size. So if you need to drag a ruler off, you can just hover the move tool over one of the uh, rulers, click and drag, and drag it right off. Now in the side final edit, I'm going to press Control T for, and then press Enter actually, uh, Control T to edit free transform. Edit free transform and just make sure you have your side final edit. And now you used to, if you're using a different version of Photoshop, you, you used to have to hold Shift to scale it uh, properly. Now they don't have you do that anymore, so that's really, really neat. And we're just going to scale this image to roughly match the other one. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to show you that I've got the eyes here pretty closely matching with the eyes there. I might even want to use my arrow keys while it's in free transform to bring it down just a little bit to match the eyes a little bit more. You'll notice the mouth lines up much uh, more clean. Uh, the chin is spot on. Um, the arms, as far as the pectorals go, is going to be difficult uh, because your body deforms a little bit as you do these um, sort of movements. So, you know, your chest will be a little bit higher. So, but it's a rough, rough idea. But the belt should be approximately the same. With my arms out, my shirt's being pulled up a little bit. Uh, with my arms down, uh, I have the shirt covering my belt buckle. But I can tell roughly about the the location of it. So I this is a pretty good spot for the belt buckle. Uh, the knees, pretty much it's, it looks like it's just give or take. It depends on which leg you're looking at, but as long as it's a rough close, you're in good shape. Um, and then the ankle, like I said, we have to go off the back foot. So this is where I'm wearing high tops here, so this is approximately where the ankle would be. And then I'm just going to press enter. And one last thing, I can now that I have my side view pretty much well spot on, if I go to the bottom of that foot, you'll notice it's about the middle and of the front foot. I'm basing it off the bottom of my far side foot in the viewport um, to the, uh, and it goes to about the middle of the front viewport foot, um, and that's based off sort of the per perspective. So. It's a pretty, pretty close, uh, rough idea. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer the better. 
and this will be one of your submissions. So, um, and now the last thing I want you to do is um, we can sort of crop this to fit, and we can also, I'm going to create one more new layer, and I'm just going to call this black BKG for background, and I'm going to use my paint bucket tool, keyboard shortcut G, and I'm going to select a black color, and I'm just going to click here, and I'm actually going to drag both of these underneath my front reference image. And now you can see that I've got, that's pretty good, my front reference image and my side reference image, okay? And I have everything sort of scaled appropriately. Now, um, you could submit your Photoshop file if you'd like, uh, or you can just take a screenshot. It'll be um, a smaller upload file if you just do a screenshotted JPEG, uh, just so you know. Um, but sending in the Photoshop file is perfectly fine, but you do need to have three images. You need to have just your front reference image, just your side reference image, and then this reference image um, with the rulers on it showing that it is scaled appropriately. And this is so important when we get into 3D modeling so that the front and the side match up properly so when we're modeling, we don't get confused if we start you know, doing a lot of modeling based off the front view. Then we switch to the side and let's just say it's not fitting properly. That's because this step wasn't done um, properly or close enough to uh, make it easier to s visually see in the viewport when we get uh, back into Maya. So um, anyway, now that we've come this far, now we have to save these files out. So the easiest way to do this is um, I already know that I have my final edit here. And what I can do is just hold Control and press A for Select All or Select All, and then Control C for Edit copy and then I'm gonna go file new or control N and it should match uh, you won't know this yet but it, the resolution of that photo should match the clipboard uh, identically and then I'm just gonna press create and then I'm gonna press control V to paste and you'll notice it only brought in just that pixel size without if I go back over here um, if I hide these layers, I'll put them in a group, side, and hide it, you'll notice even though it's the little marching ants selected this entire thing, it only selects what's on that particular layer. Since there's nothing over here, it's not going to carry over, so it's just at this point. Anyway, Control D. Now that I have that done, I hold Control, Shift, and S, or File save as file save as and now I can change the save as type just for you know my front reference image and I'll put front reference example and press save after I change it to a JPEG and press save and then this little box will come up and I have mine all the way set up baseline standards fine and then just press OK and now on my other image what I can do is hide my front reference image I'm going to go to my side final edit layer and press control A for select all control C for edit copy control N for file new it's going to match the clipboard identically. Press create. And then I'm going to press control V to paste, which is edit paste. And now I'm going to save this one out. Control shift S or file save as. And I'm going to save this out as a JPEG. And this is going to be, uh, what did I call it? S side reference example and save it out as a JPEG and then press save and then I get this box with the options I have it as large file baseline standard press OK and also with my front here 
with the rulers on, I'm going to turn off my marching ants, control D for layer, or uh, select, deselect, control D. Um, here I'm going to save, file save as, and call this front, uh, I'm just going to call this reference examples rulers. That's fine. And press save. And now I have all three of my files saved. And also, if you wanted to take a screenshot, that's totally fine. Also, you could do print screen button, alt print screen, and then just, you know, uh, you know, you all know how to do that um, since you've taken my 3D modeling one course. So, anyway, with that being said, um, be sure to submit three files, front reference image, side reference image, and then uh, an image or the Photoshop file with your rulers on. Uh, a submission with just the rulers. I have something here, ruler reference. Um, you'll see I just took a screenshot of this and then just opened it up in Photoshop and you can see that I've got my reference images. Um, one final thing I'd like to show you is um, if you took your photo from the side and you were pointing the other direction or something like that um, what you can do and you wanted it to at any point change the direction of it right here under side final edit you can do edit transform and flip horizontal and now it'll just flip the image horizontally so you can do it either way just so you're aware okay other than that if you have any questions shoot me a message uh, you know um, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thank you for watching. And in the next one I'm going to cover uh, some drawing techniques in Photoshop on how um, I created uh, my concept art for you know really any kind of rough concept art that I do. So I'll just show you some of the tools that I use, you know the brush tool um, and just some other techniques that I use. So anyway thanks again and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video.